first story. OP's brother committed self-harm. And OP couldn't care less now that his parents were blaming him and harassing him to forgive his brother and reconcile. By 27 M haven't spoken or seen my brother Kevin in five years. I barely speak to our parents or anyone in the family. When I was 22 and Kevin was 25, I found out that my girlfriend of three years was having an affair with Kevin. I broke up with her and moved back into my parents' place, showing my parents the proof of the affair. After a month of ignoring Kevin's attempt to reach out and being cold when he would come around to apologize, my parents told me it was time to forgive him. They even went so far as to stage an intervention with my ex, Kevin, and extended family to give me reasons why I should forgive them, especially Kevin. All this did was hurt me more. I told him what they did was unforgivable, especially when it came to Kevin because he was my brother. I looked up to him. I would have done anything for him. We were really close, and he betrayed me in the worst way. A couple of months after that, I got the chance to get far away from them and took it. I had no contact with Kevin or my parents. For the last couple of months, I've been in contact with a cousin because my grandmother has been having health issues, and they got worse, so I went back to visit her in the hospital. On the way out, I unfortunately ran into Kevin. He wanted to talk, but I pretended I didn't know him, and he started to cry, saying he was sorry and he wanted to have a relationship. I told him he must have mistaken me for someone else, and he left. My cousin then called me later, saying Kevin had a really bad mental breakdown about what happened. Apparently, ever since I cut contact with him, his mental health has declined a lot. Then my parents called me and begged me to see Kevin, saying that being there for him would give him peace of mind. They pressured my cousin into giving them my number. I told them I wasn't going to do that. Mom started crying, saying she wanted her family back and that she wanted her sons to be close again. I told her that Kevin her and her dad ruined that and that I didn't care about them anymore. My dad then asked if, if we all sat down, talked, and apologized for all the hurt we caused each other, things could be the way they were before. I said I didn't want to talk, and I have nothing to apologize for. The next day, my dad called, and I could tell he was crying. He said Kevin tried swallowing a bunch of pills. Apparently, they told Kevin what I said, and it pushed him over the edge. My parents found him in time, and now he's in the hospital. They think I can make his mental health better if I just have a relationship with him again, but I don't want one. I don't feel it's fair to put his mental health at risk. I don't even know how I would even help him when every time I think of him, all I feel is rage, hurt, and betrayal. He's my brother, but I just don't want anything to do with him. So am I the arsehole for not wanting anything to do with my brother. Relevant comments. Before I moved away and my parents were trying to get me to talk to my brother, I told them I wanted some space from him. They didn't listen. They kept setting up meetings for us to talk. When I told them I needed space from them, they doubled down on me, never leaving me alone. Always in my space and in my ear. My brother wouldn't stop trying to get me to talk to him, even when I asked him to. I told him I needed to get my thoughts together before I talked to him, and he just wouldn't back off, which made everything worse. The first couple of weeks when I moved away, my parents kept asking when I was coming back when I was going to fix things, and when we were going to go back to normal. I told them to just back off, let me think, and let me decide if or when I wanted to talk to my brother, but they didn't. It's why I went without contact because I couldn't get peace. I couldn't think clearly with them when they were always telling me what I should do. Not what's best for me at that moment. I did miss them at first, but now they're doing what they did before. They said they were sorry, but they couldn't help it. They were in love and are soulmates. They wanted to tell me but didn't know how. They never wanted to hurt me because they loved me, but I needed to understand them. That's all it boils down to. They were in love with each other for a while and finally couldn't hold it anymore. They basically kept repeating the same things over and over again, just in different ways. I don't know if they were dating during the intervention. They could have, but I'm not sure. They dated a year after I left, but broke up because my grandparents and some other family members crucified them. The intervention was a bunch of people telling me why I should forgive Kevin and my ex, especially Kevin. It was a bunch of excuses from Kevin and my ex. All the apologies from Kevin were, I'm sorry, but... Evan always had excuses. He never seemed truly sorry. It seemed like he just wanted to be over and done with, like it was a petty argument. The affair lasted one year, and then after I left, they dated for one year. I found out because I had to use her laptop, and her messages are connected to her laptop. A message from my brother popped up, which I thought was odd, because they would barely socialize with each other. So I decided to check the messages, and there were pictures, videos and texts. Update. First of all, I want to say thank you for everyone's advice, 
and how they experienced similar things and dealt with them. I know I didn't reply much, but I read everything, so thank you so much. First things first. A bunch of people were saying, I should thank Kevin for saving me from my ex-girlfriend, which is really horrible because he's my brother, not some random dude. No, I don't want Kevin to die. I just don't want a relationship with him. I was going to propose to my ex. My brother knew this. He knew how much I cared about her, so yeah, I'm not thankful to him at all. I still talk a good bit about my extended family, especially my grandparents. I'm also in therapy. On to the update. Kevin actually didn't try to commit self-harm, but he had a really bad mental breakdown, which led my parents to take him to the hospital. My parents decided to tell me that he tried to commit self-harm to get me to see him because they believed that I could help him. Kevin is okay now, but he'll be closely watched because he is self-harming. I don't know if he's getting the help he actually needs or if my parents are just keeping him home. How I found this out was from my Uncle Ray. He called me because my mom ran crying to him after their plan didn't work and told him everything, so he called me after he found out. I then called my parents and told them any chance we had at reconnecting was none. Not only did they lie about what happened to Kevin, they used him as a pawn, which hurt him more than anything. They are sick in the head and need help. They tried to explain that they only wanted to get their family back together. They missed how close Kevin and I used to be. I told them that would never happen, especially because of what they did, and that Kevin didn't need me. He needs professional help. My dad then screamed at me, saying it's my job as his brother to help him. I'm supposed to be there for him, no matter what. Kevin loves me, but made a mistake that he shouldn't be punished for. My mom then started agreeing with my dad, saying it was time for me to come home and have a happy family again. I told them I was done and never to contact me again. They started calling me days on end, but then suddenly stopped. My grandmother is out of the hospital and back home. She's the reason the calls stopped. I didn't tell her anything that's going on because I didn't want to stress her, but she found out through Ray. According to Ray, when he told her what had been happening, she demanded that he take her to my parents' house, and then she ripped them a new one. They started crying, especially Dad since it's his parents. She told them that they wouldn't be a part of this family, even though they were barely a part of it anyway. She also went to see Kevin and told him that he needs professional help, and if he wants it, she'll help him get it. She also told him that she would not kick him out of her life completely, but he had to fix a lot of things about himself to really be back in the family. My grandmother is also a little mad at me for not telling her what was happening. I was trying to justify it, but she hit me on the back of my head and told me it didn't matter, which made my grandpa laugh. They told me that they would make sure my parents wouldn't get through to me and that Kevin was getting the help he needed to get better. I told them I appreciated them, but to not get so stressed, especially with grandma coming out of the hospital. But again, a solid hit to the head shut that down. They told me that as grandparents, they're supposed to help their grandchildren, especially the ones that really need it. Grandma went to explain that she knows the hurt Kevin has caused, but he needs help desperately, and I agreed with her. Grandpa then explained that they would help him and make sure my parents were doing right by him. They will also make sure that nobody in the family contacts me that I wouldn't want to be contacted by. My grandmother told me if I hid anything from her again, I wouldn't want to be caught by her. So no more secrets from Grandma. So that's it for now. Kevin should be getting the help he needs, and my parents are getting their arses kicked by Grandma. I'm fine with how the situation ended. I've been staying in contact with my grandparents more, and I've been talking to more family. Second story. Entitled Syl posted OP's bridal dress to humiliate her. So she kicked her out of the wedding. Now mom and brother are refusing to attend her wedding if OP didn't re-invite her. I 27F got engaged to my fiancé 34M right before COVID, and due to the pandemic, I have experienced delay after delay. But finally, we have begun planning and are aiming for a mid-May 24 wedding. My mother asked me if I could include my sill in my bridal party, because, after marrying, my brother moved several states away and has expressed feeling isolated without family around. I could understand, so I agreed. But my sill has been nothing short of a nightmare. My bridesmaids all assisted in handwriting and sending out our wedding invitations, but the ones my sill helped with all had zero invitations inside, and instead were in an empty envelope. I know they were hers because everyone had different shades of pink envelopes to go from. She also took the longest at our makeup and hair consultations. Even extending her appointment an hour to which I was charged, I am covering her expenses, as she is a song, and I know things are tight right now, because she could not agree with the stylist on what makeup she wanted. But the final straw came when I found the dress of my dreams. The only problem was that I was 15 pounds too heavy for it, 
and I bawled my eyes out because I knew this was the dress for me. Everyone was encouraging, and I still had plenty of time to lose 15 pounds and come back for fittings etc. So I agreed and said yes to the dress. When I got home that night, I noticed on my sister's Instagram that she had posted a picture of me in the dress, crying, and I was absolutely livid. My fiancé has already seen the Instagram picture, and I am devastated. He was not supposed to see me in the dress until our wedding day, and I know so many more people have seen it. I could not help myself. I called her and exploded, adding that she was not going to be at my bridal party and that she had ruined my wedding. My mother has called me and told me that even though she understands, I lack compassion and have severely hurt my sales feelings. She asked if I could find it in my heart to forgive, but I told her that even if I did, I still would not include her in my party. Ada, in the comments. OP. I can tell from my best friend being in the picture holding my hand, that this picture was taken at my most vulnerable moment. And that was right after I was told there was no way at the weight I was I could fit into the dress, and that it was their only size left. I do not exaggerate when I say the picture shows me looking like an emotional and hot mess. I have dug deep for a way to forgive this, but I just can't. It feels intentional because we have not spoken since I never received an apology. Not even when we initially spoke on the phone. What does your fiancé say? OP. He wants her out of the wedding completely. And I'm starting to come around to his point. I don't want to decide this in anger. But it's been hours, and I'm still so hurt. Is your brother by chance, the golden child? OP. My brother was my mom's miracle baby, and because of this, she has always doted on him. But ever since my sill came, it has gotten worse. She has given my mom what I will never be able to, and that is grandkids. Because of this, my mom and Syl have grown very close, and are able to bond in ways that my mom and I can't. This may be why my mother is so hasty to defend her. How in the F did you not put the invitations into the envelopes by accident? That's not rhetorical. How did that actually happen? What was the explanation? How many envelopes are we talking about? The photo situation is also ridiculous, but she's already trying to weasel her way out of it. However, there is zero ambiguity about the difference between an empty VS, stuffed envelope, especially multiples of them. OP. I brought her the envelopes and names addresses of the guests to send them to before I brought her the cards. I had picked up the envelopes because they were ready, but the cards were going to be delivered two days later. She told me that because the envelopes were the only thing she got, she thought they were good to go and sent them out. I had spoken with her when I handed her the envelopes, but because she was dealing with her kids while trying to listen to me, she didn't hear me when I said I would drop the cards off the next couple of days. But when I dropped the cards off, she never mentioned to me that she had already sent out the envelopes. She only told me after I called her about them being empty. Why were the invites sent so early, or did they save the dates? OP. You are correct. I mistyped earlier. These were save the dates. As for hair and makeup, I especially booked for this time around due to some insecurities of my own. I wanted to know that my stylist could make me the bride I wanted to be, and she agreed to this consultation, and an additional one in January. It gave me peace of mind, and I am able to not stress about it. To me, it was worth the extra money. Girl, just elope. OP. It's true. My fiancé always has my back, even when I don't have it. He makes me stronger for it. I floated the idea of eloping to him, and he says he doesn't mind, but that he wouldn't want it to be a decision I made because of the situation. I think I've decided to continue on with my wedding, but under no circumstances should I allow my sister to be anywhere near me or my venue. Judgment. Not the arsehole. First update. My brother reached out to me to apologize on my sill's behalf. He stated that she posted it thinking the app had a feature where she could post privately. I have never seen this on Instagram or knew it was possible, but when I asked why the picture was taken in the first place, he said she just wanted to capture the start of my fitting into the dress journey. I told my brother she was not getting back into my bridal party, which he understood, but when I mentioned she could not attend my wedding, he stated that if that were the case, he could not come either. Update 2. My brother and Syl did not have a wedding. At the time, they were in their third year of college, and only married at the courthouse over a summer break. I admit that I do not have a very close relationship with her. I work longer hours and am often tired after, so I go straight home to relax, especially these last few years. Anytime we have been together, we are cordial. But there is no real relationship between us. Update 3. Thank you everyone for the positivity, and for reaffirming that I was not overreacting to no longer having my sill at my bridal party. For further update, my brother called me, and wanted to have lunch with my mother and Syl. My fiancé demanded to go too, so we drove to have lunch with them. 
It was awkward at first because no one was speaking. But then my brother spoke up, reiterating to me that my sister was sorry for posting the picture to Instagram and was hoping we could all move on from this. When my fiancé heard this, he asked why my sister was not apologizing to me directly. It became very tense, and my brother and fiancé started exchanging pointed words. He referenced my sill feeling very distraught since a few of my bridesmaids had seen the photo and personally attacked her on Instagram. And even my mom got involved to try and break the rising tension. My fiancé pointed out that my sister had yet to directly apologize to me, and that if she didn't, he did not want her at the wedding at all, and he didn't care if my brother was absent or not. When my mom said we are family and shouldn't act this way toward each other, my fiancé once again insisted that she give me a face-to-face -face apology. My sill was very standoffish toward him, but eventually she apologized to me for what happened. She only said, I'm sorry for what happened. I felt this was enough. But my fiancé demanded she clarify what happened, take responsibility for it, and apologize the same way my brother did, which became an argument over whether or not the apology was good enough. I felt the conversation went nowhere and became redundant and petty, and we ended lunch with what felt like no resolution. I told my fiancé in the car that I was okay with her apology, but he disagreed. He said that for the sake of peace, I was willing to accept less than I deserve. I really thought that planning a wedding was going to be stressful but that makes sense. But this whole ordeal has completely exhausted me and turned me off to any further planning. Last update. Added nearly three days after the original post, my sill finally said that she absolutely hates me, and it all stems from my ceasing to further loan my brother money after he borrowed $42,000 from me over a two-and-a-half-year time frame with no payment to me whatsoever. For context, I am in tech and my fiancé is in solar, so we live fairly comfortably. My sill is a psalm, and my brother works at a warehouse. His job alone was sometimes not enough to cover expenses, and he would often come to me to borrow money, which I didn't mind. But when COVID hit, it became a regular occurrence for me and my mom to be loaning out money to him. I don't know how much my mother loaned him. Well, after my brother got a steady job with a steady income, I decided to no longer provide him with any additional money until he paid down some of his debt to me. My sill described my decision as a slap in the face to my brother and one that made them feel like beggars rather than family. I cannot believe this is the reason she does not like me. When I told my brother I could no longer loan him money, he never expressed anger at my decision. It felt like he understood. What solidified my decision to not include her in my wedding at all was when she said she could see where the money was going and referenced my weight. I told her she has no respect for me and feels entitled when she has no right to be. I told her that I hoped it didn't affect my relationship with my niece or nephew but that I did not want to be around her if all she did was spew hatred toward me. I wish she had been honest before I asked her to be my bridesmaid, rather than deciding to put me through hell. I've been trying to call my brother and tell him what she said, but he is not picking up. And neither is my mom. Update. Hi everyone I'm sorry. I guess I thought that after discovering why Syl had done this, no one would be interested in what happened after. My wedding will proceed, but it will be without my mother, my brother, and my Syl. When I finally got a hold of and spoke with my brother, we had one of the first real talks we've ever really had. He told me that with a new job and loss of support from our mother, he and Syl have really struggled in their marriage, not because of us, but because Syl has failed to adjust to their new income, racking up more credit card debt that my brother has to take responsibility for paying. When he thought he had taken her credit card away, he discovered that she had just applied for and been approved for a new one. This has led to several arguments between them. And he even discovered our mother has taken on some of the responsibility with the credit card debt since she overheard Syl threatening to leave him and take the kids with her. He told me he appreciated me deeply for everything I did for him and his family during the pandemic and was sorry for everything that took place after the wedding in Syl, especially considering all of the delays. But he also said he doesn't want her to leave him, and if a side had to be taken, he'd pick Syl. I told him I understood his decision, and that I'd always be there to help him if he needed it. I don't know if this is me rolling over and allowing him to walk over me, but it felt good for me at the moment to at least end things there. Our mother had an eerily similar response, which led me to believe they had already spoken about it beforehand. I told her I would no longer cover her credit card if she was going to further enable Syl, and I would put it toward finding a new and better wedding dress as well as a therapist. All of this has really opened my eyes to the fact that, for as long as I can remember, I have chased my family's approval. I have bent over until I've broken to get them to see me in the same light as my brother. And I'm realizing through you guys, my friends, and my fiancé that this is unhealthy, and I deserve better.
So thank you guys for being there and supporting me through one of the roughest times. You guys are amazing. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.